Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my diary readings. Um, yeah, so if you're not new here, you kind of know what's going on. If you are new here, um, I'm 27, I am a widow, and um, I'm learning how to be me again and what me means now and what um, what it looks like to be me now. Um, so I've been reading little writings from my online diary and um, kind of using that as a healing um, for myself and hopefully for others who may not easily be able to share what they're feeling. Maybe they can relate. Maybe they can share my videos with their family members or friends to help um, others understand. Um, or maybe just find comfort. I don't know. Um, but I feel that it's been put upon my heart to share my story, share my stories, and um, maybe help somebody out there. So, Today we are reading um, myself. Twenty-four weeks ago, I looked in the mirror and I saw myself. Most people who have been on this journey with me know that being pregnant was not my game. From the beginning, I felt lost in my own body. The person I had spent 24 years getting to know was suddenly gone. My hands, my feet, my face, my body, my emotions, my thoughts, my drives, my wishes, my struggles, my outlooks, even my dreams were no longer my own. I had no control over what was happening. People reassured me that I would return and in the end, it would be worth it. But the overwhelming feeling of a complete invasion made me feel as though it wasn't possible. Now looking at Klaus, I would live the rest of my life being overtaken by this alien that invaded my body for those nine months. But it was so refreshing to see myself that day. Seeing myself came with new wounds being slashed open and new heartbreaks of what had been lost. But it came with the reassurance of Klaus and I's future as well. Um, yeah, so this is kind of, um, I'd like to speak on a few things. One, that every woman does not want to be a mother. And women that think that they want to be a mother, like I always did, I always said that God put me on this planet to be a mother. I wanted eight kids. I wanted like the running and the chaos and the sports and the feeding and the friends and the like midnight talking in the kitchen and the whole bit. And I hated being pregnant. I hated it all. I didn't enjoy it. The only thing I enjoyed was hearing the heartbeat at the doctor, which you don't get to do that often. I honestly didn't find out I was pregnant until I was like, I think I was like three months along. So I was only pregnant for like six months of my pregnancy and I still hated it. I, I mean, nothing felt right. Everything was wrong. I was, oh, it was just miserable. It was miserable, it was miserable. All three trimesters were miserable not my game. It was not my game. Um, and I was a woman who, oh, I wanted, I wanted to be pregnant. I would go up to women and I would snuggle their bellies and I would talk to the baby and, oh, it was not, it was not my thing. I didn't connect to the baby. I, I hear women that are like, yeah, like, I, which we didn't know the gender, but they're like, yeah, like, he or she, like, I can just tell this and, like, it likes when I do this and this and this. And I was like, I'm just fat and miserable. Like, I'm just fat and miserable. 
and that kind of shocked me and it scared me. I remember driving. I was at the intersection of Western and Ninth, which you have no idea what that means unless you live here. Um, and I, I remember telling him like, babe, like, what if I, my, that it doesn't kick in. Like, I feel nothing towards this baby. I, I don't love it. I don't like it. I don't, I have, I have no connection to this thing inside me that I feel like I'm probably supposed to connect to. Like, it was, I was, I was scared. I was really scared. Um, and I didn't connect to the baby until he came out of my body and it was instant. It was instant. I loved him with everything I had. But I went 41 weeks of pregnancy. Nothing. Nothing. And there were discussions that my husband and I had that, like, neither of us liked who I was. We didn't like this person. I didn't like her. He didn't like her. I, I mean, and I was so scared that I would not come back. Who I was would not come back. Um, God, I was scared. I know he was scared. He had to be scared. I had an ideal pregnancy. I wasn't nauseous. I didn't have cravings. I craved ice water. Sonic ice water. Specifically. It had to be Sonic. That was it. That's the only craving I had. No nausea. I mean, I had an ideal pregnancy. And I hated every second of it. And all of me was different. Ugh. It was not my thing. It was not my thing. Um. Anyways, the point I remember looking in my bathroom mirror one evening after I showered and seeing me in my eyes like I looked in the mirror and there I was like I mean I'd looked in the mirror right before I got in the shower I'd been looking in the mirror every day you brush your teeth you do your stuff um, but there she was and I came out and I was under like kind of a suicide watch for a long time. So my mother was living with me and I told her like, I see me, like I saw me in the mirror. Like I'm, I, I, I'm not lost forever. And I told her I had to go see my husband. And so, um, she watched the baby and I went and I sat with him baby I'm back look it didn't take me and I'm here and I hope that you know I'm here and I love you and thank you because I know it wasn't easy and it wasn't just nine months it was more than a year of pregnancy and then the postpartum and the journey back to myself but I came back Ugh. So any woman out there who you are pregnant or you are going through something or you are just in a weird spot in your life and you feel lost and your partner says you've changed, which we all change. Like, thank God we change because I do not want to be the girl I was 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 4 years ago. I mean... I've grown and I've changed and I enjoy life so much greater and I'm I'm just I'm growing every day and I'm a better person and thank God for change when people say that I'm like yes thank you that's like my next like Boy Scout patch thanks you know like thank God for change but there's good change and there's bad change and we know in our hearts what it is but if you're going through that know that You'll come out on the other side and you'll come out better for it, more sympathetic for it. And it's only for a short time of your life. It's so short. I was actually thinking today about like the moments of like being 18 and being at the dance. Like we went, I was a country dancer. So being at the bar and dancing and 
like the songs that bring back that nostalgia and the fact that when you're in it, like you know you're having fun and you're having a good time and it's going to be a memory, but you don't fully know like what that's going to be. Like you will never get it back. You will never be that young again. You will never have such few responsibilities again. You will never be that young and that agile and that energetic and that free and that all of the things that you are when you're 18 that you don't realize because you think you're an adult. And even if you're having the most adult burdens, it's not the same. Everything is so fleeting. So hug the ones you love. Hug yourself for God's sake. And be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with others. Be patient with friends. Be patient with like people you admire. People change. I'm going to go off on a tangent. I absolutely adore Jaclyn Hill. I think she is beautiful inside and out. I loved her and John's relationship. I love their dogs. I love their house. I love their journey. I love their struggles. But they should be able to do what they need to do. And hell, in seven years, they may get back together. It might be temporary. We don't know. And it's not our place to judge. We do not go to bed with them every night. We do not sit in the car with them when they're stopped at a red light. All of the moments that you have with your spouse or your significant others, that's y'all's. And what you do with your relationship, that's you. And the people around us should have patience and we should have patience for others. And know that we don't know what's going on. Not only behind closed doors, but behind closed eyes. It's a vicious and fast world we live in, and it's fleeting, and it's hard to even know yourself, so be patient, and like Helen says, be kind to one another.